Hey, what's going on? Your Chief Visionary Natasha Davis right here with Impact Branding. Really excited to pop in and give you another series, Five Simple Steps. Wanted to talk to you a little bit about negotiations and the power of negotiations. Well, I wanted to make sure that we are all aware of what a negotiation is. And sometimes people don't really have a good take on what a negotiation strategy is. So whether you are negotiating with a new client or negotiating with a vendor or you're looking to partner and do a joint venture in negotiations here's five simple steps to know about negotiations and what you can apply to have a very positive outcome so number one first thing you want to understand is a negotiation is an intentional discussion between parties to come to a resolution and if you look at it like that or you go in to um, a negotiation or to a meeting with that mindset and with that uh, frame of reference, it'll turn out a lot more positive. So just remember a negotiation, all it is is an intentional discussion between entities or parties to come to a resolution, okay? And, uh, and next thing you wanna do with a negotiation, a lot of people go in with the mindset of bargaining and a bargain is a win-lose. In negotiations, at the end of the day, at the end of the meeting, at the end of the conversation, it's supposed to be a win-win. I actually like to say when there's more people involved, it's a win-win-win, okay? That means everybody wins on the, the platform. So I win, you, the person I'm negotiating win, and the people that we serve win. So a triple win is what I really like when we talk about negotiation. So don't go in thinking I'm going to get, get, get. Go in thinking how are we going to come in to a common meeting ground? Win-win, all right? Number three, in a negotiation... Your goal is to accomplish three things. You want to create a memorable um, experience that's positive. You also want to make sure that the experience resonates with all parties involved. And you want to have buy-in for the outcome. So there has to be some kind of memory, something that sits in and says, you know what, this was a good experience. And, you know, we, we tossed some things around. The next thing you want to do is make sure that the outcomes or the offers resonate positively with the parties involved. And then you want to make sure that you have good buy-in to the to the um the solution. Because what you don't want is buyer's remorse. You don't want negotiators' remorse either. Because you'll negotiate, you'll go with something, and somebody will sit back and say, you know what? Mm, I didn't like that. It's not working for me. There wasn't buy-in and it doesn't resonate. And then you have a negotiator's uh, remorse or buyer's remorse, right? So we don't want that. Number four, here's something we're going to spend a little time on. And if you didn't write something down, this may be something you'd want to write down. In a negotiation, you're going to have four things, one of four things happen, or you might have two or four things happen. You're going to have questions come up. Don't be afraid when questions come up in a negotiation. It just means that the person is searching for clarity so even if you're with a client and you're coming to a meeting ground or a potential client just because they have questions don't be alarmed by it it may they're just trying to search for clarity to see you know I'm a little confused about something so let me ask a question okay number the next thing is objections don't be too rattled by objections because an objection means I'm searching to see if 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 it fits okay that's if that's the key word an objection means I'm searching to see if it fits and I don't I'm trying to see so let's let's work through it that's an objection a rejection means I've searched and I and I don't see how it fits so if you get a rejection it probably means the person or the parties involved was not able to see how the offer or how the outcome fits with what they need or with their goal. So when you get a rejection, you might want to search a little bit to find out, okay, do you see how it fits or do you feel like it's not a good fit? And then if you can solve the or create a resolution, a negotiation, right? Intentional discussion between the parties for a resolution. If you can go back into a discussion to find a resolution, you might overturn that rejection. And then, of course, when you have an acceptance, it means that the person sees very clear how it fits, sees that it fits, there's no ambiguity, and it's a go. So that's number four. 
Number five, when you go into a negotiation, you need to be very clear and you need to know what your prices are and what your time frames are. Be very clear. Know it before you go in. You need to know how much you're willing to give. How much you're willing to give in exchange for what you want to take. How low will you go with your prices if this is going to be a negotiation about prices? How much more added service or products will you are you willing to add if it's a negotiation in that capacity? Always know what you're willing to do and what you're not willing to do before you go in to a negotiation. Because in the middle of a negotiation, when you know opportunities are flying and offers are flying, and you know, uh, you know, we're putting options on the table and stuff, the last thing you want to do is trying to be figuring out what I'm going to do or what I'm not going to do real quick in your mind. So know your limits, your floor and your ceiling, right? Your floor and your ceiling to prices and to offers and also to time frames. Know that before you go in because if you if you start to hit the, the, the ceiling, you can back away from the table. If you hit the floor, you back away from the table. So let me give you an example of ceiling and floor. Say for instance, you are the person that's going to pay for a service. You'll have a ceiling on how much you're willing to pay for it. If you are the person offering the service, you'll have a floor on how much you're willing to reduce your price if you choose to reduce it. That's how that works. Time frames, how long will the uh, service or, you know, be extended and, and also how much you're going to add on. So have all these things together. So one, know what a negotiation is. It's an intentional discussion between parties to come to a resolution. Number two, going with the mindset to win-win, not to win-lose. That's a bargain. You're not looking for a bargain. You're looking for a mutual agreement. So that's a win-win. Number three, have your three goals. What you need to accomplish in this negotiation. Great memory. It resonates with all parties involved and everyone has buy-in. And ask the question, does everyone feel comfortable with this? Is Can we agree? Can we all agree on this? And you have to ask that question sometimes. Make sure we agree. Don't be in a hurry to accept an offer when people are having angst about it. That's not a good idea. Number four, know how to manage questions, objections, rejections, and of course, acceptance and know why they're coming up and so don't automatically say ah just walk away know how to deal with it number five know your price ceiling and floor and also the time frames and the capacity and how much you're willing to put in all right there are your five simple steps to negotiations i'm your chief visionary natasha davis with impact branding where we are focused on making sure that your brand has a lasting impact i'll see you soon follow us on facebook Impact Branding Consulting on Twitter, Impact Branding. And of course, you can go to the website, impactbrandingconsulting.com to find out what's going on with us. I'll talk to you soon.